Want to make a totally different burger recipe that's 75 years old? Try Ernest Hemingway's favorite hamburger. Actually, it's called Papa's favorite burger. Welcome to Lawyer in the Kitchen. Today, we're going to make Hemingway's favorite hamburger, or as it should more aptly be called, Papa's favorite hamburger. Let's talk about what's in this. There's one pound of lean ground beef, two cloves of garlic, two little green onions, and we're going to have two tablespoons of capers. We're going to have one large full teaspoon of Indian relish, which we're going to use essentially a dill relish, which is fine. We're going to have, this is the only change I'm making in this recipe. This calls for a full teaspoon of sage. I've got a half teaspoon because I tried this and to me that was just a little bit too much. But if you want to be authentic, one full teaspoon. There's one egg and then there's a, a Beaumont sauce, which uh, by the way, Beaumont means beautiful world. And we're going to make our own with a quarter teaspoon of celery salt and a quarter teaspoon of onion powder. And then there's Mei Yun which is something nobody can get. It's an eighth teaspoon of kosher salt, a half teaspoon of sugar, and an eighth teaspoon of chicken bouillon. And let us not forget a third of a cup of dry red wine. All right, so first let's make the, uh, the Beaumont. All right, I don't have an eighth of a teaspoon, but I've got uh, a half, so I'm gonna use just a tiny bit of salt. That's gonna be about that. And we're gonna use just a little bit of onion powder. And again, an eighth of a teaspoon because the whole thing all together is going to be just plenty. So that takes care of the Beaumont. Now the Mei Yun. All right, so we're going to use again about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of powdered bouillon, which is also very salty, a full uh, half tablespoon of sugar. That's salt, that's not gonna work. Here's the sugar. All right, so we've got two little green onions. We're gonna cut those up, put those in here. Although there's a lot of ingredients, this is really a very simple hamburger to make. Break this meat up. One of the reasons why you don't wanna just go all in there with your hands and tear this up is the more you move this meat, the less tender it's going to be. Put the garlic in, the onions, and all of the dry ingredients. And as you put the dry ingredients in, try to spread that out evenly. Because the more spread out, the less you're going to have to move this uh, and, and work the meat. And you don't want to do that too much. You want to keep that nice and soft. So we're going to mix this up. This is going to sit for 15 minutes and we'll be back. Ernest Hemingway was a meticulous cook. I mean, he actually wrote all of his recipes out. He would work with them, he would add, he would take away. And even though he didn't cook most of this stuff, he made sure that these recipes were followed. And this recipe is called Papa's Favorite Hamburger. And a lot of people didn't know or don't know, or which you are getting ready to know, why he's called Papa. He hated the name Ernest. So he changed his name. When he was about 27 years old, he decided he's gonna call himself Papa. And that's what he told everybody to call him. So instead of Ernest Hemingway, it was Papa Hemingway. And that's why this particular recipe is called Papa's Favorite Hamburger. Now, Hemingway was most famous for The Old Man in the Sea. He also wrote, obviously, For Whom the Bell Tolls, which was, uh, both of those are very great books. Uh, in 2009, the recipe showed up and in the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library in Boston, and they became very popular uh, through the Paris Review. And my good friend, uh, Jerry Rumpf, actually gave me this recipe. I had never seen it before. And there's an actually typed version with notes on the side where people have added add pepper, add this, whatever. There's that piece, that document actually exists. 
It's been 15 minutes and we're gonna put the wet ingredients, which would also include the relish, which I already put in there by mistake. So if you wanna be a purist, you don't put the relish in when I did, you wait until now. We're gonna put the egg in, again, all over. Same thing with the capers. Try to get them evenly dispersed. The wine, yeah, that's a cooking term. And now we're gonna mix it again. This time I'm gonna use my hands because I wanna get this mixed pretty well. And then this is going to literally marinate for another 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these now. This is one pound. We're gonna make four patties, so each one's a quarter of a pound. And they're kind of wet. That's just gonna be the way they are because of all the, the juice and everything. We're not gonna work these too much, but we want them to be about an inch thick. And I'm putting this on parchment paper. We're gonna get our skillet hot with about a tablespoon of oil. You can use any kind of oil you want. I like grapeseed oil uh, because you can get it particularly warm without it smoking too much. They'll cook high for one minute and then another three minutes. So a total of four minutes and then we'll flip high for one minute, another three minutes. Don't be tempted to put them in until it's hot though. You want this to scorch these burgers and make them nice and crisp. Ah, listen to that sound. And we're not putting salt and pepper on it. This is, they're done. There's nothing added to these. All right, so we're looking at a minute. And that's probably not quite as crispy as I want it, so I'm gonna let these others cook a little bit longer. And it's time to flip this one for the first time. That one's much nicer. Yeah, this needed the time. I'm doing this completely wrong. They're on high for one minute, and then they cook for three more minutes. A total of four minutes on one side. Four minutes on one side. Yeah, that's why it's not done. There we go, we'll get it right. This one's coming apart, but we're okay. This is like my errant potato pancake. Right over here. It'll be jumping out of the pan, soon to be on the floor. So this is gonna be, there we go, that's much better. And if this one stays together, I will be surprised. In the ballpark. Now we got a nice crisp on them. Ah, this one's still the best looking one. Look at that, that one's perfect. All right, so we turn it up on high again, and we're gonna go a total of four minutes, one minute on high. It's gonna set for just a little bit, so I'm gonna get ready to pull this out because I do want them to be pink. You can kind of feel, this one's done, that one's done. All right, we're gonna go with that. That's close enough. All right, we're gonna let those sit for just a minute. We'll get our buns ready, and then we're gonna taste these. So we're gonna put these on the bun. Look how juicy that is. There's one, and we're gonna make these doubles. And that one may or may not stay together. Just put a top on them. No salt, no pepper, no ketchup, no mustard, no mayonnaise, nothing. Just the juice from this meat, okay? And to get it right, you gotta do this. That is Papa's favorite hamburger. Okay, we're ready to taste these. Okay, a little bit more done than I wanted it. So you could probably cook it three minutes altogether. It's, it just depends on how done you want it. Mm. That is juicy. The salt's right. The flavor's great. Taste the chives. 
except there are none. You can taste the onions. You can taste the capers, a little bit of the garlic, all these different spices. Very, very juicy, tasty. I'm happy with it. All right, Jerry, come try this. I feel like uh, Guy Fieri coming in, you know, on one of those shows to where everyone's done all the work, and now I just get the... the That's the good part. So, That's the good know. part. You gotta try it. Totally different, isn't it? From anything I've ever had. I like it. I could have cooked a little bit less, I think. This is a little, last night I cooked these, they were a little juicier than this. Yeah, but it's still incredibly juicy, as you can see by the mess that I've made here. Oh, it is juicy. And still without any ketchup, mustard, mayo, salt, pepper, or anything else, other than the ingredients that you put into it. Right. Incredibly flavorful. Yeah, so, I like your shirt. Oh, yeah. Cherry works with me. These are the best guys. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> You gonna try this, Sharon? No? Do I need to? Yeah. Give me a bite. You want me to cut one in half? You just gonna try it like that? Yep. Sharon, you want me to hold the small thing? Oh. Mm mm. What do you Ooh. think? Ooh. It's not too salty. That time. is not salty like the last ones you no, made. No, no. Oh, this is really good. I'm happy with it. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. If you like, let's try this again. If you like the video, he doesn't need that. If you like the video, we gotta wait for that to stop. <laughs> if you like the video, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. And if you make it or if you don't make it, I'd appreciate your comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. And I'll see you next time on Lawyer in the Kitchen.